Electrical electrical machines three unit wise that is unit one. The unit one is electrical machines three unit one synchronous generators and characteristics and uh, its operation. What is the EMF equation? What are the types of winding? What is distribution factor, breadth factor, or distributed winding? Like that, uh, total entire chapter we'll discuss in this video. In the last video, we made one video. In the last video, we explained what is the difference between synchronous generator versus DC generator or DC machine. According to construction, according to principle of operation, what is the construction we discussed in previous videos. Let us start the principle of operation and all the entire unit one. What is the principle of operation of uh, alternator or synchronous generator is uh, Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Every generator it works on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. When you, when a conductor is placed in a magnetic field, an EMF will be induced in that. AC generator or alternators operates on the same principle of DC generators, almost armature winding of magnetic field. But there is an important difference between two when in DC generators armature rotates and field system is stationary. In DC generator, what is the difference between DC versus AC generators we discussed in previous video. Now Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction is the main principle of operation of alternator. Any generator works on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, either DC generator or AC generator. According to Faraday's laws, electromagnetic induction, where whenever a conductor is placed in a magnetic field, an EMF will be induced. That is, due to rotation of conductor, the flux links with the conductor, hence an EMF will be generated. That EMF is known as dynamically induced EMF is in DC generator as well as AC generator. It is a dynamically induced EMF. The EMF will be produced in a conductor for length L meters which moves in a uniform magnetic field with a velocity of M meters per V. Assume that V is the small V is the velocity of a conductor, speed of conductor. Then flux density is B. The magnitude of direction of dynamically induced may be given by Fleming's right hand rule for generator. The dynamically induced EMF is the cross product of a velocity of conductor and flux density into length. That is, cross product can be resolved by using sin theta, the cross product. Dot product will be cos theta we are using, where theta is the angle between flux and conductors. If you consider the flux and conductors, what is the angle theta? The EMF E will be maximum when theta is pi by 2 if you substitute theta is equal to 5 by 2 then maximum voltage will be generated hence hence e max equal to blv sin theta or if you substitute theta as a 5 by 2 that is 90 degrees or 90 degrees when flux and conductor both are 90 degrees uh, then maximum flux voltage will be generated hence it is blv volts for sin 90 equal to 1, hence E max equal to BLV volts. So that is the principle of uh, Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction and dynamically induced EMF is the principle of AC generator or alternator or synchronous generator. Coming to the construction of synchronous generator, every mission consists of two parts that is, one is stator, another one is rotor. When there is a rotating part, is there. That, uh, that is called mission. When there is no rotating part, it is called as device. There is no rotating part means it is a device. Transformer is a static piece of device or apparatus. There is no rotating part. But in case of uh, alternator or synchronous generator or a DC generator, there is a rotating part. Hence, we are called it as a DC mission or AC mission or synchronous mission like that. That is stator and rotor two parts will be there mainly for any types of mission. Stator, the stator and rotor. The stationary part of a DC generator or a synchronous generator is known as stator. The rotor is the rotating part. The stator consists of the stator consists of cast iron frame and supports the armature. One by one part wise, what is the construction of synchronous generator? Every part we will discuss now. The rotor having N and S poles, the field way is placed on rotor. The rotating part of uh, synchronous generator is rotor. In the rotor, we are placing the field poles, N and S, uh, alternatively we are placing. And uh, DC excitation is given between 125 volts to 600 volts. 
to the field windings. When rotor rotates, the stator conductor, the stator conductors which are stationary, cut by the matriculars. To to produce an EMF, we require any one of the conductor has to move or magnetic field has to move. But in synchronous generator, conductor will be in stationary, but ultra flux will move. There is a relative motion is required for a magnetic either flux has to move or conductor has to rotate. But in synchronous generator, conductor will be in stationary, flux moves. In case of DC emission, in case of DC emission, the flux poles, field poles are remain stationary and the conductors rotate in DC emission. Coming to the construction of synchronous generator, the details of construction of three phase alternator or synchronous generator, you know that already we shown on diagram, the stator having armature, armature slots on that conductors are placed. The stator consists of one is stator frame, stator frame are also known as yoke, stator core, stator core and stator slots, armature windings. Stator frame or yoke is the outer frame to carry the stator core, serves two purposes, one is a uniform flux distribution and stator core stampings and windings in position. Ventilation is maintained with the help of ventilation ducts or holes in construction to provide cooling for the machine. What is the purpose of stator frame? It houses the entire, uh, entire stator or uh, synchronous generator. The stator frame or yoke, outer frame which serves the carry, the stator core and the stampings. Stator frame is outer frame, it carries the stator core and stampings and windings which, are, which has to be placed in stator. Ventilation also provided in stator frame for the help of cooling. Coming to stator core. Stator core, the armature core is supported by stator frame. Stator core, in that core we are having our, what is the slots. The number of slots are provided on stator core. The armature core supported by the stator frame and it is built of laminations of specially magnetic iron or steel alloy. The core is laminated to minimize losses to eddy current losses. The stator core is laminated to reduce eddy current losses. Why the stator core is laminated means it is used to reduce the eddy current losses. If the laminations are provided for stator core that reduces eddy current losses by means uh, number of stampings between every stampings we are using insulation. That means the EMF induced in stamping, one stamping to another stamping, we are placing an insulation. Hence, AD EMFs will be reduced. After that, AD current losses will be reduced. The laminations are insulated from each other and have spaces between for allowing cooling air to pass through it. The slots are provided on stator core, inner periphery of core. One is stator frame. It houses all the stator core and stator stampings, uh, stator core and ventilation ducts all will be stator frame and stator core is supported for the, it is supporting structure for stator frame or uh, similarly stator frame houses the stator core, A special magnetic iron or steel alloy it is made with, stator core is made with steel alloy or magnetic iron cast iron we can use. The core is, it is a magnetic material we have to use because stator also carries current. The mag To reduce eddy current losses, the stator is laminated. The laminations are insulated from each other and have space between them to allow cooling air. Now coming to stator slots. The stator slots, where the stator slots will be? In the stator it is there, hence it is known as slots. In case of DC generator, slots will be in rotor. Rotor armature slots, those are. Stator slots, different types of slots. What is meant by slot? A slot is a one place where we are using, where we are placing the armature windings. The slots may be, different types of slots are there. To place all the conductors in one slot, different types of slots we are using. They are wide open, semi-closed and closed type. Three types of slots we are using, wide open, semi-closed and closed. 
wide open slots does not give uniform or ripples will be more there may be non uniform flux link flux linking with wide open slots is disturbance in pneumatic flux semi closed slots and closed types of slots we are using wide open slots has advantage permitting easy installation of winding coils but uh, ripples will be generated more in case of wide open coils the semi closed slots used to produce less ripples as compared to wide open slots but it is very easy to place the conductors or windings in semi open slots it is a open slot it is a semi closed slot it is a closed slot totally here we are placing the conductors armature winding is placed in slots the fully closed slots do not disturb the air gap flux but a more uniform flux will be there more uniform sinusoidal voltage will be generated in closed windings but ripples will be less voltage in semi closed this is the construction of a synchronous generator it is a stator in that slot here we are not drawn the slots it is a slot it is the slot totally these are the slots semi closed or closed type open type three phase supply we are giving first stator and stator frame or yoke stator core it is armature winding and slots it is a rotor these are the parts on rotor matic poles and brushes slip rings all will be used the number of poles and synchronous speed what is synchronous speed the constant speed at which the synchronous generator produces constant frequency is known as synchronous speed as ns equal to 120f by p number of poles and synchronous speed you will get 120f by p in 120f by p if you substitute 120f by p is the synchronous speed ns equal to 120f by p if number of poles are 2 synchronous speed will be for 50 hz assume that frequency then 300 400 for four number of poles 1500 rpm we will get coming to stator parts of armature windings armature windings are the copper conductors which are varnished that are placed in armature slots emf will be generated in armature winding the alternator windings are which type of windings alternator windings are open type windings those are open type windings those windings are distributed in slots three phase alternator each phase winding will be distributed by 120 degrees that is armature windings the emf will be generated in armature windings there are number of short pitch winding full pitch winding and lap winding wave winding like that in days of dc generators similar to that yeah ac generator synchronous generator have different types of winding short pitch full pitch fractional pitch like that different types of windings one by one we'll discuss the rotor the rotor is a rotating part in case of synchronous generator the types of rotors used in alternators are two types one is salient pole type and smooth cylindrical type there are two types of rotors we are using one is salient pole type another one is smooth cylindrical type salient pole means salient means it is projected from the core the the salient means a meaning of a salient is projected from the core this is also called projected pole type all poles are projected out for some surface it is a salient pole type all the poles are projected out from the surface of the rotor it is a surface of the rotor all the poles are projected n s n s like that this is the field winding which is excited by dc source and slip rings we are using to give the supply for this magnetic poles it is a projected pole it is a field winding the field winding is excited from dc source and it is a bolt and nuts we are using it is a one shaft it is a spring slip rings slip rings we are using here inside to give supply dc for field windings as mechanical strength of salient pole is very less because it is a projected by using bolt and nuts mechanical strength of salient pole type is very less somewhat less than cylindrical type another one is smooth cylindrical type or wound type rotor it is a 
mechanical strength will be less because of all poles are projected and medium speed applications only that is 125 rpm to 7 500 rpm only we are using salient pole type rotor for type of prime mover is medium speed for low speed and medium speed we are using salient pole type rotors generally water turbines and ic engines we are using salient pole type rotor because the water turbines uh, hydro 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 power plant we can use this one salient pole type because speed will be low the turbine speed will be okay what is the types of rotors what are the types of rotors uh, where we are using uh, for low speed applications we are using salient pole type similar to turbines pelton wheel kaplan turbine like that we are using salient pole type rotor there are two types of rotors using in synchronous generator one is salient pole type another one is smooth cylindrical type or it is also known as wound type rotor for high speed applications we are using wound type rotor What is the material we are using for poles is thick steel laminations to minimize heating due to eddy currents also. The poles also made with thick steel laminations and field winding will be wounded on that. To reduce eddy current losses in poles also we are using laminations. This is a smooth cylindrical type rotor or wound type rotor. It is similar to in case of DC generator, the rotor will be having armature like that the number of slots are there in rotor. On that slots we are providing field winding that is excited from DC supply. Smooth cylindrical type rotor, it is also known as non-salient pole type rotor, wound rotor. Round rotor or wound rotor. The rotor consists of smooth solid steel laminations cylinder having number of slots accommodated to feed to fix the coils number of slots are accommodated to fix the coil the slots are converted at the top with the help of steel or mat or mat is wind wedges manganese wedges we are using the slots are covered at the top with the help of steel or manganese wedges the unslotted portion of the cylinder this is the unslotted portion it may be round it may be round the unslotted portion it is an unslotted portion of the cylinder acts as poles. This axis pole, this axis, this axis north pole, this axis south pole, like that. It is an unslotted portion of a smooth cylindrical type rotor. It acts as magnetic poles. The poles are not projected out from the surface of the rotor and a smooth and uniform air gap between the stator and rotor because in previously salient pole type rotor the poles are projected hence non-uniform air gap will be there but in case of smooth cylindrical type rotor air gap will be uniform to avoid excessive peripheral velocity such rotors have very small diameters these rotors are very